a 70th anniversary. In three days, Galen and Ruth will celebrate. Is that correct? 70 years. Wow. So it goes on. Uh, what? Their wedding. 70, 70 years. Wow. Yeah. Happy anniversary. 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 Happy Start our worship service with uh, from Psalm 51. Stand, create in me a clean heart. Sunday when they all come over here at the carnival thing, we could use your help as uh, supervisions. All of that, and, uh, we really appreciate it. Make sure you thank, if you go to any of those merchants that are distributing our material, thank them. We got Lee Service, Greedy Insurance, Dar Dog Fitness, Willie's Cat Restaurant, um, where else is there? Um, Ace Hardware. Ace Hardware. Oh, and the flower basket in Orange Cove. And, and then there's also a butcher shop out on uh, Academy and, and Shaw out there that called me and wants to put out stuff. So oh. oh. Yeah, I'm following all my old football ball guys I coached. I didn't know where they were. They had one of them owns the butcher shops. And right. oh, I'll put it out. <laughs> then we have another one call us, and we actually have a web page for it. One of my old guys I coached like 30 years ago is now a web designer. Yeah. Triple C Sports Camp. You want to look it up? CCC Sports Rack. Cornerstone Future. Uh, uh, we have a need for the Yeah, if you got What's that? We have a need for the Oh, yeah. And you might want to, you might want to, everybody might want to bring a little extra. 
next Sunday for that continental breakfast because we're going to have a herd here. And uh, we have we have free snow cones for them afterwards. But you know, if you want to bring some more donuts. So there'll be lots to do both days. Um, lots to do. Yeah. Rick? We got an Olive update. She had surgery on Tuesday, and uh, her grandpa was texting me and Coach Knoyer and said everything went well. Is she, is she still at the hospital now, or is she able to go home? I think she's home now. She's home. Okay. Um, she, she won't have to take the med medication for the seizures anymore. That's what they were trying to get her off that medication. Mm -hmm. She will still have some uh, brain difficulty. So She's up to four words vocabulary. Dog, okay. kitty, mama, and daddy. <laughs> <laughs> she's too. Oh, but, but she's doing yeah. Wow, that's incredible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Home Pops, this is back at our, out of his home, but in our care center. And we'll be there, we think, until probably until maybe tomorrow, or more likely Tuesday, he will be allowed to come home. Depends how well all of it goes for him now. He's doing well. Is that Joyce? Is that your daughter? Yes, yes. Thank you, Mr. Rutherford. A gentleman named uh, Fred Keenum. Uh, he's been to church here, uh, but uh, he lost his wife. He's an elderly gentleman. He, he lost his wife, and then subsequently, he lost his place to live. So he was looking for either a room to rent or a small house to rent. And I told him, well, we can pray for him because he's lost. Plus, uh, if anybody knows of a place to yeah, I can rent, to, you know, I, I have his phone. You have to hear it. So. Robert. Yes? They have Emperor Estates where I live. And there's like one bedroom apartment. Okay. And they go by your social security. Okay. And I, I understand that there's five apartments available. I'll call them in the, the Emperor State too. In Dineva. We both live there. All right, thanks. Just keep praying for old Tom Guthrie too. He, he got out of the hospital. He's in a rehab hospital, San Joaquin Valley rehab, and uh, there's still a lot of restrictions to see him. But now, at San Joaquin Valley rehab, if you've got a home, uh, we call it a COVID test. They'll let you. But he wants out really bad. Yeah. No, I, I have your keys. That's oh. not yours. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. 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 If, if there are no more uh, praises and prayer requests, let's let's open our Bibles to Psalm chapter sixty-six. Starting in verse 16, and we'll read through verse 20. Psalm chapter 66, 16 through 20. 
Come and hear all who fear God, and I will tell of what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard wickedness in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard. He has given heed to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not turned away my prayer, nor his loving kindness from me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day that you've given to us. Thank you for the opportunity to come before and worship you. Thank you for um, those that are here. Thank you that, that Kathy is able to hear, be here this morning once again uh, for, for Joyce as well. Just pray for uh, Joyce's daughter, Becky, um, at Cuya Delta, just with the, the different, um, you see the, the different issues that are going on there. And I pray that you would give the, the doctors wisdom to, to know what to do and to make the right decisions. Just pray for uh, Becky's healing and recovery there and just peace of mind for uh, Glenita and for Joyce and all the other family members as well. Just thank you for um, having your hand upon, upon that situation. Just also want to bring before you all of the two-year-old girls. Just thank you that her surgery went well. Thank you for um, hearing our prayers and for your loving kindness to, um, to bring her through that and just ask for continued recovery and continued peace upon her family as as she recovers and just just thank you for that help her brain to um, pray that you would continue to continue to work there and um, she would make a, a full and a quick recovery just thank you so much for um, just your loving kindness upon upon her with that and ask that you continue to protect her and continue to heal her also want to bring before you this sports camp that uh, we've been preparing for the last couple months. You see all the all the businesses that have volunteered or agreed to have um, registration flyers and signs at their uh, facilities. Just thank you for that. I pray that you'd use them to reach out to to kids and um, just pray that you'd prepare their hearts to hear your word. Just thank you for all those that are helping and will be helping uh, this Saturday and Sunday. Just pray that you would prepare them to um, preach the gospel and prepare them to answer any questions that the kids might have. And just pray that you would work in their hearts and, and you'd be glorified with, with our efforts to serve you. Just thank you for all those that are volunteering and I pray that you'd bless them in a special way for that. Thank you for Tom Pops. Also want to bring him before you this morning. As you see how he's he's had surgery and um, he was sick after traveling. Um, just pray for continued healing and recovery there as he's at the in the care center over at Palm Village. Just ask that he'd be able to, to go home soon and be well enough. Just also pray for Jan as she's um, at home, just pray that you'd give them both the strength that they need to make it through each day. Just also want to bring before you uh, Mr. Fred as he's recently lost his wife and his home. Just ask that he, if he's not a believer, he'd take this opportunity to seek you out and you would reveal yourself to him if he is a believer. Dear God, I pray that you would you would encourage him and that your spirit of, of peace would be upon him in this in this hard hard time where he's he's lost his his wife and his home. Just pray for Mr. Ruff III as he's uh, a friend to him. I pray that you would give him the words to say, and Mr. Ruff III would be able to encourage him and uplift his spirit. Just ask for your um, 
just your peace would be upon him in this, this hard time. Just also want to bring before you Mr. Guthrie as he's been transferred to a, a rehab facility. Just pray for his recovery there as he's ready to be out of out of the re rehab facility and, and back home. Just also want to bring before you Pat. Pray that you encourage her and uplift her as she's at home by herself right now. Just pray that you would... Um, Continue to work your hand of healing upon him, and he'd be be back home in no time. So thank you so much for the 70 years that Galen and Ruth are celebrating this Thursday of, of marriage. Just thank you for the example that they have set. Just pray that you'd continue to bless them in a special way, and um, that you continue to give them the strength that they need to make it through each day. Just also want to bring before you, Pastor. So he brings us the message this morning. Just pray that uh, you give him the words to say and help us to apply what we learn into uh, our everyday lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's continue our worship with number uh, 72. Brenda. Yes, sir. 
So I told I Mary, look out, don't hit the kitten. You know, look out. And, uh, and then we got up a little bit further, and there's another little kitten. Get the little one. And he was sitting there in the front of the, at, at the stop sign, and I stop, and he starts running at me. And she goes, don't hit the kitten. And he, I don't know what he did, but he jumped inside my car somehow. And we and the guy behind me saw it, and we all stopped, and we were just digging around there trying to get that stupid. Yeah, dumb kitten out of there, so I didn't drive. I didn't want to drive here. You know, yeah. a, a flat kitten. So, 
anyways, I tried and tried to find him, couldn't find him, so I just said, well, I'll drive slow. And I drive slow, and uh, and he just kind of bounced out all of a sudden and ran across the road. <laughs> so he, was, he was in there, and he got in the but couldn't find him. Anyways, I didn't have anything to do with what we're talking about today. Uh, today we're going to talk about the better way. We got a three four, four, uh, a three week set of this, and there's no better way than Jesus. And the first uh, first thing we're going to talk about today is legalism. Okay, and uh, that's kind of a grace killer. And uh, you know, you know, some people can kill grace with legalism. We got to be careful with that. Paul uh, is writing to a church, if you remember, that's doing very well. If you read. The first chapter of Colossians, he really compliments his church and how well things are going. But then he gets into chapter 2, and he starts to, starts to list some concerns he has for this church that it doesn't get just derailed from its progress. And one of the things he talks about is I think we can all relate to, because we've run into these guys before, the smooth talker. And in Colossians 2.4, it says this. He says, I'm saying this because I am afraid that someone may fool you with smooth talk. You know, and their guys can come into church and they can make a really good argument and forget to open up the Bible and tell you anything of what the Bible says. And they say, well, this makes sense to me. Or it makes good sense to me. Well, be careful with that. Not everything that makes good sense to the, to the world out there is biblical. And you've got to know, you know your Bible and, and make people back it up with that. The other thing they talk about is philosophies and empty deception. In the second part of verse, uh, first part of verse eight, it says, "See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophies." And we talked about how when I went to college, that's the first time I got exposed to philosophy class, and I learned a lot of great philosophers, but but most of them were either atheists or agnostic, and they and, and they had some ideas, but they all involved self kind of. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps and no attribute to uh, God himself, the creator. And then it warned about something I think we're creating right now in our world. And it says, the traditions of men and the principles of the world. And in the second part of verse 8, it says, which depend on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. Tradition is that which is given from one to another. Just because people have believed something and handed it down through the years, it doesn't necessarily make it true. You know, and I think we're developing new traditions today in our world that uh, I went to a wedding. I always like going to weddings because I think people should get married. And there's a lot of people just say, oh, marriage, just, that's, that's old-fashioned. You know, the, the, new, the new way of man is to live together, and that's kind of what we do. And I was, I'm always glad to see people get decide to get married because I think that's a godly thing to do. Yet the traditions will not you know, dictate to that. And that brings us to today we're going to talk about one of three things they warn you about. So, Jacob, I've got a real short uh, read for you. So if you look at Colossians 2, we're going to look at verses 16 and 17. Okay? He's only got one more week as a single man. No man. <laughs> That's very <funny. laughs> Maybe pray for her. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2, 16 and 17. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Okay, let's pray. You God, I just thank you for your word. Help us to look at it today through your eyes and, and interpret it as you, God, would have us. God, help us to apply it and convict us where we need conviction. Uh, encourage us where we need encouragement. And God, I just pray that today after church we walk out of here better equipped to serve you. In Christ's name, amen. All right, so here we go. Paul doesn't pull any punches with these guys in the Colossian church. They're Christians, they're doing well, and so he, he, he goes right to the meat of the matter. He's already dealt with uh, the philosophies like I've talked to you about. And the other thing I didn't tell you about, but when I finished preaching this last time, Christ, uh, Paul told them Christ is enough. It's all you need. 
Christ. That's it. Don't add to it. Christ and Christ alone can save you. And so he does that, and then he continues to refute this heresy that he sees in the churches of the Colossian area. And he says this, there's legalism problems. That's verse 16 and 17. There is mysticism problems. That's verse 18 and 19, which I'll talk about next one. And then there's asceticism, which is verse 20 through 23. But I'm going to talk today just about legalism, okay? And I want you to look at those first few phrases. It says, let no one act as your judge. Let no one act as your judge. Paul tells the Colossians, let no one act as your judge. Do not sacrifice your freedom in Christ for some kind of man-made rule that is in the Bible. It says in Romans 10, 4, they don't understand that Christ gives, you, gives to those who trust in Him everything they're trying to get by keeping the law. You know, a lot of people think, oh, we got this handle. We understand Christ. But you know, one of the things I think is a good barometer of what the world thinks is listening to the music of the day. Okay? I mean, they can't go wrong with country music, right? I mean, they, they don't get any wrong. But, you know, just think of this. Uh, see, I'm not a singer. Everybody knows that. But, uh, but you know, I listen to country music once in a while, and there's a line to a po po popular country music song that says, we're working hard to get to heaven where I come from. And let me tell you something, if you're working hard to get to heaven where you come from, you ain't going to make it from there. Because you can't work your way to heaven. You, heaven is a gift from God. And you, you, and that's where I come from. And I hope it's, at the end of the day, I, think that's, I hope that's where you come from too. Because, you know, there's a reason we do what God asks us to do, but it isn't to get to heaven. God forgave us for our sins when He died on the cross. And when we come to Him, we repent our sins, and we and we give Him our heart, and He does it. Paul reminded the Galatians in 5.1, it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourself be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. You know, a lot of people don't want to become Christians today because they say, Oh, dude, I don't want to give up this, I don't want to give up that, I don't want to, you know. And, and that's the devil lying to you because the actual truth is, is that the yoke of slavery is sin. And you know, if you get enslaved with things, you know, some people get enslaved by pornography, you get enslaved by, by an addiction of drugs or alcohol. Those are, those are, that's slavery. God's way is freedom. It's good life. Paul said there's been a lot of time on that subject in his ministry. He didn't want people to have their faith in Christ hijacked by people who would claim Christ wasn't enough to save them from death, hell, and the grave. The Christ plus people have always existed. Um, he commanded Titus in his word, Titus 1, 14 and 15. He said this, Not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. Unto the pure thing, to unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind is in constant defilement. You know, you know that Jesus was perfect, right? That Jesus came there as the one perfect man. But yet they tried to convict him with the man-made laws, right? I mean, what is the one of the things they, they crucified Christ for? Ooh. He healed the guy on the Sabbath. They, that was one of the charges against him. That was no God law. That wasn't a law of God. God didn't say you couldn't heal somebody on the Sabbath. And yet, during the Old Testament time, they started tacking laws onto God's laws. And they got so many laws that they couldn't tell which were man-made laws and which were God's laws. And, they, and, and so some of the things they accused Jesus of were these man-made laws that weren't laws at all. Um, I've seen churches tack all kinds of things uh, onto what's necessary for salvation when I grew up. Hey, movies, you know, I mean, you, know, you probably went to, a, if I was a kid, you went to a, a, a church, they don't go to a movie. Or, uh, you know, dancing, you know, don't go dancing. You know, I tell you, I've seen some people dancing. You probably, they, they probably should have made that one, but no. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay to dance. Okay, it's okay to dance. Uh, long hair. You know, when Hippie went, came to church one day and a guy said, you don't look like much like a Christian. He goes, I look more like Jesus than you do. You know, and so, you know, that's kind of, uh, you, know, you know, sometimes we, what we look like. Slacks and dresses. Nobody can understand that here in California. But when I was back in, in Lynchburg, Virginia, in the South, there were, school, there were churches you did not walk into 
without you know a shirt a shirt tie or if you're a girl you always wear a dress I found that out the hard way I went to Liberty not aware of the way things were there and I walked into Thomas Road Baptist Church on a recruiting trip and that was in the 70s right so I had my black angel flight shoe suit on with my collar rope and my my silk pants Dun, dun, dun. And I swing up those things, and man, everybody had a three-piece suit on, and they looked at me like, oh my goodness, look what California drove in. You know? <laughs> and they, um, everybody had a haircut, and I didn't have a haircut, it was down about here, you know. And I bet you, I lived the league, and I walked around that campus that, that week of having people come up to me and ask me if I was saved, if I need Jesus. <laughs> because they looked at me, and they were just convinced that, you know, this guy has got to be lost. And, um, you know, uh, only Christian songs. You know, that's another thing. When I got in with a real conservative crowd, I, I, my, the football coach picked me up at the airport to take me on a recruiting trip, and he asked me a weird question. I didn't know what he was going to talk about. He goes, hey, do you listen to tunes? I go, tunes? Do I listen to tunes? Yeah, I listen to music. Oh, okay. So he turns on the radio. But, you know, back at that, back when I went to Liberty, we couldn't listen to anything but Christian music. And we couldn't even listen to contemporary Christian music. It had to be old Christian music. That was it. Uh, so my mom would say, amen. Amen. That was what we were um, Drinking alcohol. You know, I grew up in, I grew up, and my dad worked at the winery, but I grew up not drinking alcohol. And, you know, and a lot of times that was kind of my litmus test where you were with Christ if you ate and drank alcohol. And, and really, you know, people started arguing me about that, and I couldn't win the argument. You know, they say, what did Jesus' first miracle was, after all? Um, changing water to wine. Okay, enough said. But, you know, so, you, so, so that's their smoking. My dad smoked. I hate smoking. He, he killed him. You know, he had got emphasis and killed him. But, you know, like I say, the Bible doesn't forbid it. You know, like the old saying goes, you might you you might not uh, die, you might not go to hell for smoking, but it sure makes it smell like you've been there, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so, uh, all, that, all that said, the spirit inside of you should be attentive to what God calls. Are there movies Christians shouldn't go to? A hundred percent, yes. A hundred percent. Are are in fact now? Is there a lot of Christ, uh, movies we shouldn't be watching? Hundred yes. percent. Okay. Are, are there types of dancing Christians shouldn't do? Absolutely. Uh, there are songs that we shouldn't listen to? Yeah, they, they, they get our mind off Christ. Uh, you know, uh, discernment as to what we should do is from God. You know, somebody said, oh boy, Mark, you said we could drink. Let's go. Now, I can give you a million different... Uh, I, I, I know I can tell you there's nothing in the Bible says you can't drink. There is a thing about warning you get about getting drunk. And if you get drunk every time you drink, you probably shouldn't drink. You know, and, and, and if you have a problem with alcohol, get away from it. You know? Same thing with anything, everything else. That, that, those are the things we should, should lay on. But even if we try to do all the right things, salvation is not encompassed in those rules. It's encompassed in Christ, in Christ alone. <clears throat> What's the old saying? I don't drink, I don't chew, and I don't run with women that do. You know, and, and, and he said. Uh, but at the end of the day, in, in Colossians 2, 14 and 15, it says this, having canceled the written code with its regulation that was against us and that stood opposed to us, he stood, he took it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Jesus triumphed over these things by the cross. And you know, sometimes uh, we feel like, you know, we, we can't get away from this idea that I have to do this. I have to get to heaven. Now, do I think you need to repent from your sins? I do. Do I think people talk about repentance enough in church? I don't. Because there is a real thing. You say, I've got to repent. And some people say, I can never do that. I can never stop, and you can fill in the blank. I can never stop lying. I can never stop cheating. I can never stop, you know, I mean, I can never, some people, I can never stop living with this person. And, and we're not married, but I can never, you know, and I had a terrible, uncomfortable conversation when I was a youth pastor in Phoenix. Uh, you know, mother would call him crying to me and said, you've got to talk to my daughter. You know, she's living with this guy, and, and it's just, and they're living in sin, and you've got to talk to her. So 
so you know, I call them in and I say, hey, you know, what do you think God thinks about what you're doing? And they knew the Bible, and I said, well, I don't think he likes it. And I said, okay, well, what are you going to do about it? And they said, well, you know, let's just get out there, you know. I said, okay, I'll help you. Dumb thing to say. So I go and I go up to the apartment, knock on the door, and big old boy comes up there and goes, I came here to get, you know, so and so out. I'm taking her stuff. You know, and they kind of eyeballed me. I thought, oh boy, you know. I was young then, so I didn't think they could really beat me up, but I mean, I could at least hold my own for a while. And so I took all their stuff and I put it in the car and took it down to Mary's parents' house, and they, that lady stayed with her parents for a while. Now, she did go back to sin, but she left again, and to this day, I get things from her, and she's walking with the Lord now, married with somebody else, and everything's going Amen. on. So God repent. God, the people repent, they get saved, and things change. And that's why we can't be like, hey, we can't have anything to do with you. You know, hey, we can't condone things, but that doesn't mean we can't love them. We can't love them and tell them that they need Jesus. Romans uh, 14, chapter 14 through 15, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 8 through 10, they all discuss Christian liberty. And the only legitimate reason to restri uh, uh, for restricting it is to protect weaker Christian brothers or sisters. Um, if you go to church where it says suits and ties or dresses, don't show up in cutoffs. Don't show up in a t-shirt. You know, you're just kind of testing people. Why would you do that? You don't need to do that. You know, I, uh, I, I don't drink, and a lot of people have a problem with that, that because they, I make them uncomfortable. But as they get to know me, and realize that I don't feel that's a condemning thing. I can't condemn that 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 because it's not said in the Bible. They can drink and they leave me alone and just give me my soda or my water. And it's it's fun, you know. And 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 so I really think that, and people ask me, well, why don't you drink more? Well, honestly, in my life growing up in this town, the worst days of my life was when my dad drank. And when he came home and he'd been drinking. I didn't like my I didn't like my life those days, and so I kind of, at at a very young age, I just said I'm not doing it. And my dad was real liberal about it. He told me when I was a young boy, he sent me down. He said, Mark, if you ever want to get drunk, you go. I'll let you do it, but you got to let me go with you, so I can make sure you get home. Okay. I never took him up on it, but I'm I, I'm I'm telling you that this is that that. People have to respect my boundaries because I have a I, I, I have a problem with that and it brings me bad memories. And, and once in a while you can drink and have a problem with it and you say, well, you don't, you know, somebody sells that and you gotta say, well, maybe I do gotta get a handle on that. So that's the deal. The Colossians were under no, the new covenant. And uh, and the new covenant meant the diet the dietary laws of the old covenant were no longer enforced. So you know uh, in Mark 7, 14, Jesus came, down, came out and he told people, you don't have to keep all those dietary laws anymore. Now, in the Colossian church, they had a lot of people say, oh, yeah, you, you need Jesus. But you better keep, you better not have no bacon. You know, or you better not eat this or that. You know, and this is what Jesus said. Jesus called to the crowd, come and hear. All you listen, he said, and try to understand. Your souls aren't harmed by what you eat. But by what they think, or by what you think and say, when he went, then he went into a house to get away from the crowds, and he, and his disciples asked him what he meant by the statement he had just made. Don't you understand either? He asked. Can't you see that what you eat won't harm your soul, for the food doesn't come in contact with your heart, but it passes through your digestive system. By saying this, he showed that every kind of food is kosher. So, all of a sudden, they go from these real strict dietary laws, and I used to have a, a relative that was seven-day Adventist, so we couldn't eat pork around her, or um, there were some other things. You know, she more of the vegetarian side, and that was fine. But, 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 you know, she didn't, she didn't go with that. And and Paul reminds the Romans, the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking. But righteousness, peace, joy, and, holy, and of the Holy Spirit. John, Romans 14, 7. So the dietary laws were no longer enforced. I like some of those verses, you know. You know, all things are good to eat. I like to repeat that when I'm in the drive through line at in and out burger. You know, hey, okay, I'll have my triple-double now. So here's the <laughs> 
Uh, and then, you know, there's, in terms of worship, this is another one. And I'll be honest with you, this is a difficult, um, this is a difficult sermon for me because a lot of the, um, a lot of the things that it talks about, I used to be there, you know, and, and I used to be thinking. One of the things it says in Colossians 2.16, it says, or in respect to the festivals, or new moons, or Sabbath day. A festival was one of the annual Jewish celebrations such as Passover, Pentecost, the Feast of Tabernacles, and the Feast of Lights. You can see all those in Leviticus 23. And then there are sacrifices that are offered on the new moon or the first day of the month in, the, in Numbers 8, 28, 11 through 14. And all these, are, all these things kind of were pointing to when Christ comes. That's why they did the sacrifice. Was going to be the perfect Lamb of God, and Paul's point is sim uh, was simple: true spiritual uh, spirituality does not consist merely by keeping external rules, but having an inner relationship with Jesus Christ. If if God asks you why should I let you in heaven, this isn't going to work because I watch my diet. What I you know, you know, as I watch my diet. Or, uh, or because I worshipped on Saturday, that's all wrong. If Christ, if Christ, if Christ, it's Christ and Christ alone who sends you to heaven. Now, this this was hard for me because it really convicted me. Because I've done even at this pulpit, I have preached about the, the frustration I have with so many people doing so many things on a Sunday. In fact, one of the things that bugs me the most about being a coach is people tend to to do their sports on Sunday. And I thought, Sundays for church, they can find another day to do their sports, you know. And, and then I, I was reading all this, and it says, on occasions, I've been, you know, okay, talk about that. Um, but uh, but I, I like a guy named A.W. Tozer. I've been reading a book of his. You might want to check it out, too. It's called The Dangers of Shallow Faith. And he got a guy that asked him a question. They said, hey, uh, I, uh, I'm a realtor. I work six days a week. But all the other realtor partners I have are putting pressure on me to work a seventh day on Sunday because that's when people walk, look at houses. And he asked Tozer for his advice. He's a pastor, and he did a, I think he did a column in the, in the Chicago paper, on, like, kind of like a Dear Abbey, but on a Christian sense. And he said this, if your partners will not listen, sell out, and start something on your own, God will bless you for it. I'm not a Sabbatarian. I do not believe one day is above another day, but I believe you ought to have some time for God. The man who works seven days a week has no time for God. And the office that keeps open to get a few extra nickels on that seventh day has no time for God. Whether he takes Wednesday, Sunday, or Friday off, he ought to take a day off. But Sunday would be the day to take off. It is a testimony, and it enables the man to get into the house of God and mingle and raise his voice in songs of Zion with people of God. And I like that. See, I, I still lean towards you should take Sunday off. But you know, I went to a church before I came here that had Sunday service, but they also had Thursday night service. And I never felt good about going Thursday night. I always thought you should be here on Sunday, you know. But if you had something you weren't going to be around, you could make Thursday, you'd go there. But it always kind of bothered me. But really, you can worship God any day of the week. You need to worship God. Amen. And then some people say, well, what if I give him Sunday? You know, I say Thursday night. Well, you're supposed to take a day for God. You know, and so if I were, you know, can you get a day, a total day off where you just relax and get, get with God? I think that's a good thing. So if I tell you you're going to church and you're worshiping God on Thursday night and I tell you you're not in God's will, I'm stepping on your Christian liberty. Because that's not true. So how does this apply to me? Bottom line here is that Christianity is not hard to understand. So don't let people complicate it. All people have is free will. And they can use it to accept Christ or they can use it to reject Christ. Sin is what separates us from Christ. And we're all born in sin and a sin nature. Christ came to forgive us of our sins and to make it possible to go to heaven. Salvation comes when we repent from our sins and put our total faith in, faith in Jesus Christ. That's how we're, we have a saving relationship with Christ. You don't need anyone else to tell you how to, how to get to Christ. You need 
to have a face-to-face, person-to-person prayer with God if you want to become a Christian. Christian, we all can go directly to Him. The Bible tells us. It says in the Bible, one mediator also between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. 1 Timothy 2.5. Christ came to eliminate all the red tape and all the hoops people think you, they need to jump through to obtain forgiveness. Christ came to untie you from the guilt and sin. Galatians 5.1 said it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. So stand firm. Then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. A lot of people say, why, why even try to be good? What's the motivation? I'll tell you what the motivation is. I'll tell you this, this, the best way to live is the way God tells you to live. I, you, know, you can try all the other ways and they just lead to destruction. You know, if I wasn't a Christian, if I wasn't a Christian, I looked at the, what would be a good way to live, I'd look at the Bible and i say, that's a great way to live. And I bet you I'd have, a, I'd have rewards for living the Christian life. And, and, and I, I follow, you, but John 14, 15, if you love me, God said, you'll keep my commandments. Why do you keep your commandments? To get to heaven? No, you keep your commandments because you love God. When you give yourself to God, it's easy because you want to live what God, the life God wants you to live. It's, that's the motivation. I love God. Amen. Are you burdened with sin, guilt, addictions, hate, anger, loneliness? That news for you. Jesus came to set you free of all that. If you're tired of carrying those burdens, if you don't uh, have to in, have any, have to any, anyone, uh, the Bible says in 1 Peter, cast all your anxieties on Him because He cares for you. And that's what I'm leaving you with today. I'm leaving you with this. God loves you. And sin is messing you up, not God. And, and God's ways are the good ways. And I encourage you to return to God, turn back to God. And you say, and even if you don't think you can, you can, you can. You've got to give God the chance. Give Him the credit. He's the maker and, and redeemer of the world. And so you, re, you, you repent and you say, God, I give you my life. And God will give you the ability to live a life that He's called you to live. He wouldn't ask you to do something impossible. It's impossible without Him. But you can do it with Him. Let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you for your love, your understanding, and your guidance. God, help us to know and discern what is your perfect will in our lives. And God, I just pray that if there's anybody here that God that, that hasn't given their life to, them, to you, that they don't leave today trying to earn their way to heaven, God, but that we would accept your gift of, free, uh, uh, of the eternal life. Just pray this, God. I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my life. I give you. I give you my heart. Show me what to do, Lord. Help me to serve you for all the rest of my days. And God, you promised that if I prayed and asked you in my heart, you'd come in. So thank you for coming into my heart. And help me, God, to live from this day forward for you. In Christ's name.
Lord, thanks for your word. Thanks for the freedom that we have in you. Thanks for uh, the salvation that you provide. Help us to, uh, Lord, live in that uh, thanksgiving and appreciation for what you provided for us. And to live a life uh, to serve you. In Jesus' name.